Good evening. So, after uh, the 25th for uh, Burns Night in Scotland and the uh, 26th vaguely pointing to Australia, I thought it's, uh, it's time to get to something more traditionally English. Um, and in my little collection of beers from beer merchants, I have a couple of bottles from Westerham Brew. And uh, I thought that's a good starting place. Uh, a bit hard to get more more English than this. It's well British English. It's called British Bulldog, and it's uh, a beer dedicated to Winston Churchill, who uh, needs no introduction. Uh, it's uh, best bit of sort of beer. It says 4.3 percent on the label. Um, there's a lot of information on the label on this. Um, uh, I won't go and try and read it all. Uh, they've got a Cyclops style kind of three bitters, three sweets. I, I tend to ignore all that sort of crap. Uh, apparently it's got green sand aquifer water. Again, this is brewers, and especially in the UK, getting really precious about where their water comes from, which they then probably chemically alter anyway. Uh, but yeah, so Kent hops and uh, Westerham Brewery Brewery yeast, which is quite interesting actually, because that's 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 the thing about this beer that interests me the most is the yeast. Um, it's a British best bit. Uh, it will probably be malty. It uses English hops, so uh, I'd say the word twiggy. It might be twiggy. Who knows? It, it, it could be a whole. There's a whole pile of different flavours that come into that kind of twiggy category that are nice and good. So. It's a bit of an unfair descriptor. But what's interesting on this, it says in the bottle here, um, a recultured yeast from the original Black Eagle Brewery um, it recreates the flavours of Westerham ales as they were enjoyed by Sir Winston Churchill. Um, so, a traditional, a very traditional English ale. Oh, okay. That's not so good. It's okay, there's only an old Ikea uh, mat down here. Now, I didn't mention, but this is a bottle conditioned beer. Um, the current temperature of the bottle is probably about 10 degrees. It's been in the kitchen, and my thermometer in the kitchen right now says 9.4. Um, so, I imagine the beer is a, it's fairly cool, so it shouldn't really be doing this, but oh well. Um, it wasn't quite what I'd call a gusher, but it was, it was happy to see me. Um, yeah, so it actually says in the bottom, um, pour with care in one movement as to uh, as to leave the sediment in the bottle. Um, so it's probably uh, a classic example of a of an over conditioned um, bottled real ale. And again. Camera real ale. It means that there's been yeast in there, and the secondary condition or over condition in this case comes from that yeast. Well, people get confused by that. They go down to the supermarket and they buy a bottle of real ale, and it's uh, it's 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 full as London Pride, which has been bloody filtered. I think it's been pasteurised. I'm not sure, but you know, it's it, it's what Cameron would call dead beer. Um, doesn't mean does necessarily taste bad. Um, some of them, especially for the traditional styles, it works better. Oh, so it works better than doing it to a hoppy beer. Pasteurise a hoppy beer and you may as well not put the hops in in the first place. So, it's going to be hard to drink this one. It it, it smells like a bottled English bitter. Um, spicy woody notes on the nose. A little bit marzipan-y. So I guess I almost almond when I say marzipan. Hmm. It's a very pleasant beer. It's um, got a nuttiness to its flavour. It's not very sweet. It's, it's actually fairly dry body. And that might be, again, bottle conditioning. It, it's perhaps just gone a bit too far and pulled out a little bit too much sweetness. There's no off flavours, so there's nothing wild's got in there to cause that condition. Um, it's just done its thing over a long period of time. Uh, I don't know what the best before date on the bottle is. I don't know what it was bottled, so 0615, so it's probably not been in the bottle more than more than six months. But it is pleasant. Um, <clears throat> if you're having this at home and <laughs> you might worry about having some condition issues, uh, you could try refrigerating. If you put it in the fridge, more CO2 will will uh, soak 
into the beer as such. It will dissolve better in the beer, which means if you open a cold beer, it's less likely to do that. So you can put it in a freeze temperature. Uh, flip side to that is if you open some breweries beers that they've been refrigerated and you pour them out, they might go, you might think, oh, it's flat. It's a bit of a balancing game. Uh, a few breweries I know like to produce their beers, uh, and this is talking craft hoppy sort of IPAs. Um, they'd like to produce them in such a way they've got a nice bit of carbonation at 12 degrees, uh, which means that in the bottle, if you stick it in the fridge down to 4 or 3 degrees even, um, you pour it, you go, oh, my beer's flat. Um, so it's worth keeping that in mind. There's, <laughs> unless there's a guidance on the bottle, there's not much you can do about it. Um, one of these bottles, uh, it says to enjoy at 10 to 12 degrees centigrade, so this is spot on its recommended temperature. It would be nice if it was a little bit less fizzy in the mouth, be able to taste it better that way. Hmm, it's good. Um, as I said, there's nothing bad about it, it's a bit too fizzy. Uh, I'll put this aside and maybe let it, um, if you do this to your beer, and then put it down for a couple of minutes, it will get a little bit flatter. Um, <clears throat> I have another beer from this brewery, so we'll uh, give that a go in a second. Okay, so our second Westerham Brewing Company beer. Viceroy India Pale Ale. Um, but what's interesting about this is the little National Trust logo on there. Um, I'm quite a National Trust uh, fan. <laughs> member while well, I can afford it, maybe not for much longer. Um, it's 5% uh, uh, IPA, it's using uh, hops from National Trust Farms, so I like that. Um, again, we're sticking with this, this very British or perhaps English theme. Um, the West Ham Brewery caps have their own little labelling on them too, which I like to see. So, a little little bit of enjoyment. Um, that's fizzing up a bit, and it's not too bad. This one's also at about 10 degrees. So it's uh, it, it's lively, but it's not too lively. I'm, I'm guessing it it looks like it might be bottle conditioned. I'm not sure. If, there, if it is, there's not much sediment on the bottom. Whoop, okay, we're turtle heading. Let's get into a glass. Carefully. Now, one of the interesting things about this beer um, and it's actually the reason I first became aware of Westerham myself is this is gluten free so it's a gluten free English style 5% IPA they call it in a bottle it may or may not be bottle conditioned I'm not sure uh, does it say? It says bottle conditioned beer on the back, so this is uh, a gluten free, a bottle conditioned beer. Now I'm not sure what, it, what they've done to make a bottle gluten free. There's, uh, there's the old method of just not putting anything in that has gluten or pre deglutenized malt. Um, and there's the modern, well, what I think of as a modern method that Poppy Land uses for all their beers and Stringer's beers up in Cumbria use for uh, the uh, bottled amber and gold gluten-free beers, but they they do the same ones in cask, cask conditioned, as the uh, uh, the the north is the sort of darker, best bitter, and the plan B is the golden ale. So there's more of this interest, better gluten-free beer. It doesn't have to be sort of some some bodiless pissy lager. Uh, you can actually deglutenize an interesting beer using something called I think Brewer's Claris, which is an enzyme designed to cause beer to be clear when it's cold by breaking down proteins uh, it also happens to target the gluten and it gets rid of the gluten in the beer which is a fantastic thing for uh, gluten intolerant type folk they can have a good beer uh, there's possibly no real reason that the entire craft beer industry couldn't be gluten free except perhaps for a minor added cost and not wanting to be even further marginalised by saying, well, we're gluten free. Um, well, that makes you some sort of dodgy hippie product. But yeah, anyway, this is uh, the Viceroy IPA from Westerham, um, using hops from a uh, National Trust farm. I almost forgot that. It smells 
Um, I'm throw the sip there. It, it smells pretty normal. It smells like beer. I, I, it could be could be your standard pint of best bitter down the pub. There's a little bit of fruitiness in there. Tiny fruity floral herbal note. I, I still have the lurgy, so again, I'm still not firing on all cylinders. Um, but I can still smell most things. I've I, I've, I've tested myself as such against other beers. Um, yeah, so a little bit peppery. Uh, it's a pleasant British best bit of sort of aroma. Which fully followed through in the mouth. Um, it's, it's, it's more malt forward than hot forward. It has a really nice bitterness at the back of the mouth. Um, a little bit of toffee in there, um, the more burnt sugar, toffee kind of thing, biscuity, less less of the actual maltiness. It doesn't taste specifically malty. It doesn't taste like molasses. It doesn't taste like anything like that. It's a biscuity, toasty kind of end of the malt spectrum. In the hop sense, mostly what you get is bitterness, and there's this nice bitterness right back through the back of the mouth. As far as these sorts of things goes, the IBU is probably on the higher side. Doesn't say on the whole. Don't really care. We perceive it as we perceive it. And then this, again, as on the nose, there's this kind of fruity um, note in the back of it. The little fruity floral kind of hop uh, flavours coming through. It's British hops. It's an entirely British beer. We aren't expecting citrus and peaches and all those kind of crazy flavours. And uh, and for what it is, it works fantastically. And it's a gluten-free bottle-conditioned beer. I mean, I'm not a gluten avoider myself. I know some people do it as a bit of a fad, which is not well, it's just their choice. <coughs> but I also know some people who are honestly gluten intolerant. And something like this should be a godsend to them. It's a proper gluten-free beer. Um, I mean, it's a breakthrough. And this is where technology is good. This is why you shouldn't be scared of technology and beer. Uh, you shouldn't be scared of uh, of kegs and CO2 and all that sort of thing. If you taste the beer, and like this beer, in its, in its best bit of style and way, it's a nice, full-bodied, really tasty, traditional best bitter and it's good then why worry about how it's being produced so yes that's Westerham um, two beers uh, both in the very traditional scale of things and uh, both very tasty and you know aside from the over condition in the first one um, which still tasted okay uh, no problems uh, very tasty. So, I will uh, call it a night. We're nearly done. The month is nearly at an end. Hooray.